Hello, very good evening, children. Uh, today we are going to discuss about living world for meat. So, living world actually, you know, it's a very basic concept, children. And this concept, uh, it talks about uh, what are all you are going to learn in forthcoming chapters. Uh, as far as meat is concerned, if you see in previous year question papers and all, you will get generally one question from this particular chapter. It is a very basic chapter, of course. Okay. And uh, you will be having two topics in this chapter. One chapter, one topic of this chapter is characteristic features of living organism. And the other chapter or topic is about taxonomy. Okay, so please, uh, very good evening those who are watching for me and uh, let us see uh, the living world now children, all of you. Uh, those who have uh, preparing from home, uh, it will be very useful. Every week I will be putting one one topic and we will be discussing important questions also thereby and I hope it will be really helpful to you all and uh, uh, thank you all for participating, those who are in the online now. Uh, so, let us see about the living world now. Can you all see my board, of course? Um, you know, what is the living world? You can find variety of organisms in the earth. So, what do we say generally? Uh, variations of living organism is what we refer it as biodiversity. Yeah, so just yeah, biodiversity, and you could find. Uh, how many organisms on the earth? Can anybody tell me how many organisms are there? It's around, uh, you can find uh, 7 1.7 to 1.8. Am I correct or not, children? Yeah, good evening. Good evening, Viva. We are discussing about uh, living world. Uh, of course, uh, means biodiversity. That means variation of living organism. Of course, you can also answer me, children. Can anybody tell me how many organisms do we find on earth? It is around 1.72. Yeah, one2 1.8. Okay. So, we find 1.72, 1.8 is the answer. Fine. Very correct. And uh, as you know, there are many characteristics of living organism to define. Can you share some answer like uh, what are the characteristic features of living organism? Yes, uh, it is about the growth. It's about uh, reproduction. And uh, as you know, growth is there. Uh, reproduction is there. Metabolism is there. Okay. And also, you know, uh, they have the characteristics of responsiveness. Okay. 
so what is the most exclusive character of living organism if i give this four option can you tell me children which is the most exclusive character of living organism yeah thank you vibha and thank you ivana for answering yes it is reproduction and metabolism uh, yes so we find uh, which is the most exclusive character yes hello sanjay thank you for joining we are discussing some characteristic features of living organism yes can you tell me which are the character among the four is the characteristic features of living organism is it growth or is it reproduction or it is metabolism or responsiveness yes okay uh, yes metabolism is also exclusive property of living organism only it is ncrt line even okay uh, but um, the most important uh, characteristic feature exclusive feature when all the four is given we can say yes we have chosen c uh, metabolism responsiveness uh is most important only living organism can respond as you know in vitro also we can do the reactions no viva okay so shall we discuss one by one uh, what are the characteristic feature it would be helpful for you so these are the points growth reproduction metabolism cellular organization and consciousness so let us see what is growth growth is irreversible increase in uh size as well as uh the mass of the cell so it happens in two way either increase in number or increase in mass is what we call it as growth okay let me give you a question now see we have mountain bacteria euglena and uh, moses among the four what do you think which will grow you think children among the four whatever we enlisted is it uh, mountain or uh, bacteria euglena moses which cannot grow which cannot grow or which will show external growth anybody okay so all living organism will be showing internal growth all of this will grow yes very correct answer and external growth is shown by external growth yes see growth is increase in number and mass yes we discuss second of course you know growth happens both living as well as on the non living component so we are increasing in number as well as in the mass okay um, in living if you see i have shown you the picture from irreversible increase only from egg to the cork you can able to make a seed to the tree tree never become seed of course tree produce seed it cannot reverse back its growth okay so growth is possible in living organism growth in living organism or living component of the cell we call it as protoplasmic growth okay see can you say like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum all these are showing the protoplasmic growth okay apoplastic growth where the cell even having the non living component if it grows it is what we call it as apoplastic growth for example fibers okay and uh, as you know uh, cell wall all these 
Now, living components growing internally. Next point. So, living will grow from internally. As you know, when the cell is dividing, it grows. So, grows internally. Whereas, non-living will grow externally. See, if I add sand to the uh, mountain, the rock, mountain height will increase because of the sand. So, that is non-living only grow externally. Okay. Now, can anybody answer me where growth and reproduction are, Dharani, good evening, Dharani, thank you. And uh, where growth and the reproduction are happening simultaneously in which organism? Growth and reproduction are happening in which organism? Is it in unicellular? Is it in multicellular? Or both? Or none? What would be your answer? So, it is a synchronized process. Okay? Fine. Next one. So, regarding growth, let me ask you one question. See, assume a bacteria divides every 10 minutes once. Okay. It becomes double in every 10 minutes. Then, number of bacteria in a beaker after 30 minutes or 60 minutes. Can anybody answer me? See, the bacteria divides every 10 minutes. So, in that case, it becomes double. Uh, how many bacteria do we find after 60th minute in the jar or cup? We have 6 10 minutes. Can I give options also? Anybody? Is there any Sanjay? Are you working? Okay, Dhani said uh, 64. Yes, it is 2 to the power of 6. So, 2 to the power of 6, whatever is the answer is our answer. Yes or not? So, the, like this question is possible in growth. So, what are the questions possible in growth? Uh, increase like uh, living organism growth occurs internally. Non-living externally. What are the two characteristic features of growth? Of course, it is a growth in number as well as the mass. Okay. And uh, of course, where it is synchronized in growth and reproduction, uh, in unicellular organism, it is synchronized. There is another process called accretion. So, accretion is what when we grow the non-living matter by adding non-living matter. Suppose, uh, if we make a soil mound in the beach, na, by adding non-living matter, that is what we call it as accretion. See, growth of non-living by non-living is what we call it as accretion. So, these are the points we need to remember regarding growth uh, children. The next one we have to discuss is about the reproduction. So, let us see what is uh, reproduction. See, production of younger ones is what uh, we call it as reproduction. Of course, 
it is of two types one is asexual another one is sexual so asexual is it a exclusive property of living or non living also can reproduce anybody is it a exclusive property of living or non living can also reproduce actually both if i break uh, if i break a uh, brick uh, we will get two pieces yes or not so both will be um, reproducing so let us see what are the properties of asexual or characteristic features of asexual reproduction there are many methods asexually they can reproduce uh, can you tell me some uh, example for budding children which are the organism which uh, reproduce through budding Okay, uh, I myself will say budding is by hydra. Okay, or even sponges, you know, they'll do internal budding. And then fragmentation. So fragmentation is by, you know, liverworts will do, uh, spirogyra will do. And our NCRT line says algae. Protonema, uh, these organisms will do fragmentation. Fission, fission is a property of bacteria. So, bacteria will do uh, fission, binary fission. Of course, possibility of asking question children, like uh, there are transverse fission, longitudinal fission. Ah, yes, pa. Uh, transverse fission is also there, longitudinal fission is there. Uh, can you write uh, which is the example for longitudinal fission? Is it euglena or bacteria? Which undergoes longitudinal fission? Is it uh, euglena or bacteria? I gave option. Yes, very good. Euglena is the correct answer. Pa. Okay. So, longitudinal fission by Euglena and transverse fission bacteria. So, multiple fission, possible question. Next one. So, multiple fission, what would be the correct answer if you are getting answer questions like uh, bacteria, Euglena, Plasmodium amoeba. So, options I am writing. A option is amoeba. B option is plasmodium. C option is bacteria. D option is euglena. So, which would be the correct answer for multiple fission? Yes, it is plasmodium. Very correct answer, children. Okay. So, these are the possible questions. Let me recap once again reproduction. Of course, you know, both living and non-living will reproduce. Okay. And uh, asexual, they may ask you which organism undergoes or they may give some 10 examples. Okay. And uh, they may ask you uh, among these, which and all undergoes but day. Okay. So, those sort of question and as I said, multiple fission amoeba will undergo only at certain times. Not every time amoeba will undergo fission. Then uh, let us see spore formation. So, you know spore formation is possible in certain organism. Can you name some of the organism which undergo or reproduce by spore? So, spore, it may be gonidiospore. 
okay uh, which is a sexual are you know zoo spores are there so i'll just share my ppt also growth we already discussed of course you can see uh, growth so you can see of course uh, uh, increase in mass and size uh, growth in living organism is from inside so reproduction either asexually or sexually they can reproduce you can see here the fission of bacteria okay and also budding in yeast you are able to see and there are organism which cannot reproduce also as you can see a mule here okay so mule worker honey bees and of course uh, sterile human beings are also there so they cannot reproduce that is what uh, we considered as uh, sterility the next process we are going to discuss is about uh, metabolism so what is metabolism can anybody answer me is it a series of physical reaction statement one or series of chemical reaction which one you will take so which is statement is correct is it statement 1 or statement 2 yes it is statement 2 which is correct children of course it is series of chemical reaction and you all know there are two types of uh, metabolism are present one is anabolism you can see here uh, anabolism where we uh, make the molecules construct when you break it is catabolic pathway can you see the catabolism here so you are breaking so that it release energy as well as the heat is liberated energy will be always released in the form of atp whereas uh, in anabolic pathway as you can see uh, you can find uh, the amino acids can be bounded and forms protein okay and many glucose joins together and forms uh, glycogen so this is what uh, regarding the anabolism and catabolism of course it is not exclusive uh, we can't say uh, it is exclusive property it is given in ncert because it can also be performed in vitro you can do the test you for example i'll tell you see you can perform the salivary amylase experiment in the test tube just for uh, understanding so let us take a few ml of saliva in the test tube then we add little bit of starch into the test tube okay after a few minutes say half an hour later or one hour later if you add iodine you couldn't find blue black color indicates what uh, the salivary amylase has digested the starch and so we couldn't get the blue black color so in vitro also we can able to perform is or not so this is regarding the metabolism the next one we are going to discuss is about cellular organization so in vitro they are not living thing but they carry out living reaction means the test tube is not a living thing where we carried out the reaction is living reaction okay so you can see the cellular organization of course you are here you are seeing a plant cell and you can able to see a animal cell also so if you see the plant cell where you can find the cell wall and a certain organelles restricted only to the cell of plant certain organelles are restricted only to the
animal cell. So, for example, you can find centriole only in the animal cell. You can find chloroplast only in the plant cell. So, it's a defining feature of living organism. Consciousness responding to the stimuli. So, there are various stimuli. Tacticness is present. Like we have phototactic for example. So, what is phototactic? Responding to the light. Okay. So, in later chapter of 11th standard, we will be discussing about photoperiodism. As you know, uh, like uh, the flower will be produced only exposed to 16 hours of light or 12 hours of light or moderate light of uh, hours of light. That is photoperiodism. So, phototactic responding to the stimuli of light. Chemotactic. Responding to chemicals. So, for example, uh, uh, we may know in Alaska there is osparadium, which is a chemoreceptor. They can respond or they can identify the chemicals in the water. So, they can move away. They are responding to it. That is chemoreceptor. Or, uh, for example, thigmotactic. Responding to the touch, as you know the Mimosa pudica plant where when we touch the plant leaves will get close, yes or not. So that is uh, Mimosa pudica, you can even see here thigmotactic, phototactic, hemotactic, all these. So they can either respond to the light, water, water if you pour a jug of water to the cat, it will run away. Temperature, other organisms, chemicals, polluted. So, the response may vary. And you can find they are surrounding, they are very much aware of uh, every organism. And human is the only organism where we have the self-consciousness. Very good evening, Shrikan. Thank you for joining. We are discussing living world. Okay. I hope you are all clear, children. Any doubts? Uh, can I clarify your doubts if you are having those who have joined? Sanjay, Dharani, Viva. Okay. So, as I have started when I said, it is a very basic chapter. gives information about biology. And you may get one question among this. So, diversity among living organisms. We already discussed there are 1.7 to 1.8 million species. Uh, very good evening, Tilak. Thanks for joining. So, there are 1.7 to 1.8 million species are present. So, the next topic we are proceeding is taxonomy. So, what are the events involved in taxonomy? It is the identify, classify nomenclature. So, what are the possible questions from here? As I said, the number of species we have. What is the first and foremost step involved in taxonomy? Can anybody guess? The options are in the board. Identification, classification, nomenclature. Which you will think. Which is the foremost important step in taxonomy. Just a guess children. Is it identification, is it classification or nomenclature? Yes, very good Tilak. Yes, it is identification. Excellent answer by Tilak. Excellent uh, Tilak. Yes, it is identification. We have to identify the organism based on their descriptive character. What are the descriptive character? Let me describe certain character who is going to identify the organism now. Or phylum, for example. See, the organism shows jointed legs. Okay. And they also show metamerism. Okay. 
and the excretory organ uh, of course externally if you see they are covered by chitin these external morphological character describes analid or arthropo good evening shubhan thanks for joining we are discussing living world basic chapter uh, shubhan uh, and uh, we are into the second topic uh, taxonomy part so in taxonomy as it is only one question it would be a good recap for those who are preparing from home for neat okay uh, so based on the weightage of the chapter we can proceed if this is only one question you may generally get for this chapter okay and jointed legs metamerism and uh, chitin are the characteristic feature of anelid or arthropoda yes excellent shubhan it is arthropoda yes it is arthropoda like that uh, based on certain characteristic feature describing feature we can identify the organism so these defining features when many organisms are showing we can group them the grouping of organism is our second process which we call it as grouping of organism we call it as classification okay and then of course we have to name the organism the naming of organism we call it as nomenclature i hope you are clear shall i show my ppt yes so we discuss identification we discuss classification and nomenclature this is even referred as systematics it is even evolutionary relationship with the organism if there are new systematics where we even include genetics and molecular biology system of natural is a book written by linnaeus who is very much related to the nomenclature what nomenclature introduced by linnaeus Good evening, Parthas Sardi. Thanks for joining. We are discussing living world. We just started uh, the first topic, chapter of the eleventh standard. Um, as we proceed, we can discuss based on weightage also. Okay, uh, the nomenclature is the what nomenclature we introduce? I asked. Yes, very good, Shubhan. Again, it is binomial nomenclature. Okay, so before we go into the binomial nomenclature in detail, in which nomenclature we include subspecies also? Subspecies are included in which nomenclature? Any guess? Is it polynomial or trinomial or binomial? Yes, children. please feel free to answer i am your teacher only subspecies are included in which nomenclature yes subhan very good excellent again subhan it is trinomial nomenclature always we la um, subspecies included in trinomial nomenclature only so this uh, characterization identification classification nomenclature so characterize you know uh, means uh, they have had mammary gland all these na with this descriptive character if you able to identify then classify group them whether they are protist or they animals or they plants okay and then name the organism of course naming where we discuss binomial nomenclature is by linnaeus who made binomial nomenclature and you also know when we name a plant of course it should be approved by icbn so wherever we write bn for should come a sometimes question will come what is the correct expansion of icbn international code for botanical nomenclature 
What is the correct expansion for ICZ, an international code of zoological nomenclature according to NCRT? OEF only is given, not for. Okay. Yes, very good evening, Kritika, for joining. So, what are the characteristic features of binomial nomenclature, children? Before I explain, can anybody share one or two points? Any of you? What are the characteristic features of binomial nomenclature and why we use Latin? You know, it is a dead language. Nobody using the uh, Latin for communication purpose. So, it is only an official language. So, only it is used for naming the organism scientifically. Homo sapiens, ratus ratus, naja naja, exocetus, hemidactylus. All these scientific names only by Latin because it is only used officially. And when we write, it should be underlined. Can you see? Mangifera, it is written and indica, underlined. When we take a print, it should be italics. Yes, italization. Very good, the excellent. And genus name should be in caps and uh, species name should be in small letter. Of course, author name should be there in the side. It is called author citation. Okay. And this is what the taxonomical category. As you know, the question may be which is the chronological order they may ask you. Or between the phylum and order, what should come. Okay. Or which will end always like this. C-E-A-E. -E. Can any guess? anybody guess C-E-A-E? -E? Which one will always end with C-E-A-E? -E? Yes, very good, Tarani. Excellent answer. Genus always capital and uh, species always in small letter. Is it family or is it order or it is genus or species? Possible question. Any guess? Yes, children. All can answer. I'm your teacher. Feel free to answer. Yes, very good, Subhan. Excellent. It is family CA. The next possible question on the uh, hierarchy is which is the real existence? Which among the category is having real existence? Yes, Darini, excellent answer. It is family. In case of a plant family, always end with Solanaceae, Malvaceae, Lilyaceae. Okay. Which has real existence? It is kingdom or phylum or class, order, family, genus or species. Which has real existence? It is species. Okay, children. That only has real existence. Possible question, children. Another question, which is the basic unit of taxonomical hierarchy. Basic unit. Also answer is species only. So, these are all possible from the taxonomical hierarchy. And any rank of taxonomical hierarchy is called God. Possible question. Any rank of taxonomical hierarchy. So, from the taxonomical hierarchy, these many questions are possible. Any rank of taxonomical hierarchy, we call it as, of course, any guess, taxon. 
okay so these possible questions from this particular uh, checkerboard and how to remember you know uh, king philip came over for gooseberry soup is possible pneumonic or kanishka parked the car on front gate of snake park so anything you can remember children uh, this is what the taxonomical order and possible question we discussed okay yeah very good darini the any rank of taxonomical hierarchy we call it as taxon and if you see there will be a table column also children so this is an example for uh, the taxonomical hierarchy and this table column is also given in our ncrt so which is the correct order of human homo sapiens so order you should know okay and which is the correct order of uh, uh, musca domestica house fly so those possible question from the tabular column is possible so we will proceed from the species so species is what as you know it is the lowest category basic unit these are all some example indica tuberosum nigrum lycopersicum i already told you this is real existence genus some common characters of the species are grouped together in one genus as you can see panthera leo panthera pardus panthera tigris solanum tuberosum solanum lycopersicum solanum melangena so we are grouping into genus some common characters of the genus are grouped into one family like as you can see solanum petunia datura comes under solanaceae panthera and felis comes under felidae some common characters of the uh, families are come under same orders convolusia and solanaceae comes under polymonials felidae canidae comes under carnivora so same way some orders are coming under class and then division in case of plants phylum in case of animals of course the highest category is kingdom which is plantae or animalia as we proceed from species to the kingdom the general characters are getting increased or decreased you know. can anybody answer as we proceed from kingdom sorry species to kingdom the general characters or is it increasing or decreasing Yes, Suban has answered. Suban, if it you proceed from species to kingdom, they are reducing. Kingdom to species increasing. Suban, okay. So please remember, species to kingdom, it is decreasing. NCERT line and uh, kingdom to species, if they ask, you can say increasing. Yes. Yeah. So this is an example, as you can see. Uh, species tigris we have taken they are belonging to the genus panthera tigris belonging to the family felidae and uh, they are all coming under carnivora class mammalia phylum chordata kingdom animalia so this is what i said you should remember the order primates in case of homo sapiens homidae the family of house fly so like that they ask the question of course this four Example, you should know at least for NCERT uh, NEET exam, sir. So, what are the taxonomical aids we are having to identify and classify and name? So, first and foremost thing is herbarium. So, as you can see, the herbarium 
uh, we have a sheet where we mount the dried specimen and of course one corner it shows all the details like uh, date of collection and the names uh, family genus species etc do we mention height of the plant in the herbarium sheet children yes or no do we mention height of the plant also in herbarium sheet yes subha that's a spirit and you won't forget um do we mention height of the plant in herbarium sheet yes or not very good no we won't mention the height of the plant maybe a statement type question see we mentioned height of the plant in the herbarium sheet so you should know it is incorrect statement okay and largest herbarium collection we found in which place possible question uh, royal botanical garden q in england so botanical garden of course where you have in situ and ex situ plants it is kept for aesthetic values recreations of course education to do research for all these purpose botanical gardens are there possible question again which is the largest botanical garden in the world royal botanical garden in india of course indian botanical garden howrah national botanical research institute lucknow the museum so what and all we preserve in museum you have the specimens preserved in bottle or you may have uh, the herbarium sheets see here you can see some birds taxidermy has been done so they will cut open remove the organs they stuff some uh, straw or something and they will keep some beads for their eyes they preserve as such the bird so that the children those who are coming they will be able to know what are these birds how they were surviving all that so you can see even the herbarium sheets here and the artifacts all these details we can get it in museum okay among the thing what and all we discuss biological museum uh, we discuss herbarium botanical garden among the three which gives quick reference for taxonomical tool i will write the option here botanical garden herbarium museum which gives quick reference to the taxonomical tool any guess a b c only i gave children it is herbarium next possible question children so herbarium is a quick and fast reference to lencrt line even okay uh, then next one we are proceeding to the so museum what and all we can find preserved specimen dry specimen of plant and animal as herbarium insect preserved in boxes stuffed larger animals like birds and mammals collection of animal skeleton so just like botanical garden zoological gardens are also having recreation research aesthetic value okay and uh, so we will know what are the animals are there in uh, uh, wild animals we can have able to see them in the zoological garden of course children will enjoy there okay we will know about their habitat then key so key what are the possible questions a pair of contrasting character we call it as what anybody would like to write a pair of contrasting character is called a
this couplet okay and uh, as you know here you can see each couplet has two opposition uh, points like uh, dry skin yes or no yes means it is reptilian no means of course it may be amphibian where they have moist skin next they have hair yes means might be a mammals no means of course reptile opposable thumbs yes means it means bipedal like uh, or no means of course they may be uh, tiger or lion bipedal uh, means uh, gorilla uh, no means gorilla of course yes means you can say lion or tiger or cat even bipedal means human so like this some contrasting character we are taking yes darini very correct it is couplet the pair of contrasting character um, can be a statement type question even and each statement in a key we call it as lead it may lead to the next point okay and uh, there are two types of key for example metamerism to see okay we have an animal where we could find metamerism okay scales so immediately we are proceeding to the fifth point so it leads each statement is considered to be a lead so it is leading to the fifth point so suppose you assume this is the first statement then we won't see all the statement two or three whatever it is we we'll directly proceed to the fifth statement okay so in fifth statement it may be mentioned locomotion by c t so there may be another point so each statement we consider it as lead okay that is another possible very important question uh, so couplet and lead here also i mentioned in yellow color uh so like this only it will be there it may be bracketed it may be intended so bracketed you can see here always opposable points positive gram positive gram negative rod shape or it may be round uh, cockeye or uh, mm, rod shape uh, basically like. so something like that contrastingly they have given that is what we call it as key flora it is about the distribution of the plant species have been given it is what flora manuals so identification of the organism of particular area okay so if you are doing a research or a plant species of particularly in uh, ananagar then it is considered to be the manual you will get it in manual okay then monograph any one taxon if you wanted to do then taxon you know rank of any taxonomy maybe family maybe genus maybe species you wanted to do that is what we call it as monograph okay catalog is of course alphabetical list like dictionary which where you will get what book uh, what details all that you can get so this is uh, regarding the living world any doubt children regarding this topic as i already told you it is a very basic chapter in biology with the two topics one is about characteristic features of living organism another is about taxonomical tools okay and taxonomy and uh, one possible question mostly if you analyze the previous year questions mm -hmm. and generally it is a direct question ncert lines uh, there won't be any understanding skillful or uh, application oriented question and all is not expected here so just a direct question you may expect from this living world read the ncert lines and uh, 
that is more than enough for this particular uh, chapter children so in next coming weeks we will be doing very important chapters like biological classification animal kingdom and those who are preparing from home um, for writing neat exam it will be very useful um, thank you all for participating any doubt please stay back ask your doubts clarify yourself and go uh, and your teacher only so you can definitely ask your doubts thank you all children Thank you, Shubhan. Thank you, Dharani. Thank you, everyone, those who have participated. Thank you, Parthasardi. Thank you, Pratika. Thank you, Viva. Thank you, all. Yes, thank you.